чувствуется это самое... So I see that we have here all the lovers of uh, security issues that have come here. Thank you very much for joining the session. It's uh, well known that to try and compete with such uh, a serious speakers that are very forward-looking um, is a tall order for us. But nevertheless, when we listen to, to, while listening to uh, a presentation on the first plenary session, I uh, got a very clear, uh, firm impression that virtually all of the speakers, nevertheless, touched upon the issue of security. To this or that degree, so the matter of security and safety is still a serious topic on the agenda. So let's try and talk about this uh, to, to uh, this afternoon because we're going to speak about the cyber security and uh, the um, balance uh, between uh, and the balance uh, between um, cyber security and digitalization. Uh, and so let me introduce uh, the speakers here, uh, uh, Mr. Batashevich, uh, Rostelecom, Andrei Dmitry Konovalov, uh, represents the SAS company, Ilya Kuchetkov, Bank of Russia, Alexei Leonov, that's uh, the group of companies, the Center of Financial Technologies, Ilya Lipunov, um, the Solar Security Company, Dmitry Volkov, um, the IB Group uh, and uh, and uh, Andres Lukovtsev, uh, who represents the IBM Corporation. So we have quite a motley group here. On the one hand, we have security people and uh, representatives of the business community as well. So launching our discussion, I would like to remind you of one of the uh, points that was uh, made uh, this morning. In my opinion, the fact that uh, we uh, heard uh, during the keynote speech, um, um, it looks as follows. So in traditional life, there is always a bank and there is always, always a client. They interact with one another using different channels, uh, more frequently the, the, um, through the physical presence uh, of uh, um, the customer uh, in a bank, uh, but with the development of technologies, with what we call uh, fintech, uh, the configuration of uh, this um, interaction has changed. Some new things uh, have emerged. emerged. Uh, yes, uh, well, uh, um, information technologies um, have always been part of the uh, bank and banking services uh, and uh, uh, um, and the matter of cybersecurity uh, um, has always been part of uh, such um, information technologies and devices within a bank. Uh, but nowadays, uh, we see that between um, the bank and uh, the client, we see um, a third entity um, represented by some financial um, uh, technologies. And since I am a security person myself, uh, and so uh, the alarm button uh, went off in my mind. Uh, and so uh, how do these new technologies uh, change uh, the uh, risk aspects or alter the relations between the bank and the client? And so what new things uh, we could see in this uh, architecture? So I would like to um, address the first question to the IBM representative, what uh, he can say about this topic. OK, um, dear colleagues, uh, good afternoon. And uh, today I uh, represent the uh, IBM company. Uh, our colleague, um, Gary Mitchell, uh, who is uh, listed on the agenda, uh, was to be here. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it. Uh, um, uh, and nevertheless, uh, he um, shared with me uh, some uh, very uh, um, interesting and heartfelt uh, uh, facts 
that he wanted me to share with you because he planned to speak about such things uh, uh, himself. And uh, let me uh, just uh, continue uh, your um, introductory speech uh, about the changing markets and actually changing markets. So that's something that we hear about uh, year in, year out. At at all kinds of conferences, but the uh, thing is that the market of security devices is changing very quickly. Quite recently, um, uh, the IBM has uh, uh, performed uh, a survey uh, regarding the cyber uh, uh, technology, cyber security drivers, um, and the first driver is the uh, change of the uh, criminal's profile. Uh, who uh, uh, was uh, this hacker? criminal previously. Uh, usually it was um, an enthusiastic person who um, maybe had certain ambitions uh, regarding uh, uh, hacking some servers uh, and uh, it was fun, etc. Uh, but uh, um, that was the main um, motive. Uh, it was fun and enthusiasm. Nowadays, uh, such um, teenage hackers are no longer teenagers. They've grown up, and their motives, motivation, um, have changed. And so uh, last year, uh, we discussed uh, the uh, um, uh, uh, we uh, discussed uh, the market of uh, uh, criminal activities, and um, in 2016, it was 1.5 uh, trillion dollars. Uh, uh, and so I can make certain forecasts about 2020, and um, uh, that that's uh, the value of such criminal markets would uh, would uh, exceed two trillion dollars. And uh, uh, Kaspersky, for instance, uh, uh, believes that it's um, um, going to exceed that. Um, and uh, um, when we say two trillion dollars, uh, and so um, and so is it a large amount uh, or um, not so very much, uh, uh, not so um, large? Well, nowadays uh, the um, dr illegal um, drugs market um, well uh, accounts um, globally for one trillion dollars, and so uh, and we are talking about the drivers of security, and so you see, just within three months, so uh, we expect uh, it to be worth of. Tr uh, Two uh, trillion U.S. dollars worth. Uh, the second driver is that 58% uh, uh, percent of all uh, computer attacks uh, are, uh, are inside jobs. It means that we don't have um, an outside enemy, but it's an enemy that's already within, inside, and the attack is always from uh, within. And so it means that uh, some new employees uh, that are working for companies, uh, they uh, may do harm uh, to the company from the inside. Side because they were pert, they were bought, so they were threatened, they were uh, challenged in any way, and they agreed to do that. So that's uh, approximately um, uh, uh, what we can see, uh, what we can expect by 2020. And uh, actually, approximately uh, 50 billion devices uh, are expected to be connected and interconnected to the internet uh, um, by 2020. But uh, last uh, uh, summer, for instance, we saw um, um, a major a uh, DDoS attack uh, in the United States um, that was uh, um, augmented by uh, through the um, um, electric kettles um, um, and uh, various uh, domestic appliances and uh, refrigerators, etc., etc. And uh, so uh, and so the number of such devices that um, um, helped uh, to uh, um, enable this uh, DDoS attack uh, was certainly not 20 billion, uh, uh, but uh, well, you can expect uh, and you can imagine uh, how large damage would, would be, cur uh, would be uh, um, done by 20 billion uh, devices. And so uh, today uh, we can speak about uh, uh, different uh, regulatory um, um, innovations and regulators are introducing tough uh, measures and uh, for instance uh, some uh, um, uh, regulators offer uh, fines of um, two uh, two uh, four uh, percent of uh, income so I just well thought about uh, 20 billion an army of 20 billion of electric kettles what are we going to do with this army of electric kettles maybe says um, SAS has certain recipes of how we can cope with them thank you and we take now Good afternoon, uh, but Artyom uh, Mikhailovich, um, I cannot uh, fully uh, agree with you that we are um, now uh, arguing uh, the speakers of the um, uh, plenary session because, well, we know uh, that uh, all the participants uh, have mentioned that the technologies are changing so quickly that even uh, the uh, 
um, security department um, um, staff, uh, they uh, should always understand uh, all the uh, trends and, let's say, the Alexa, Amazon Alexa, for instance, uh, that we saw on the video, uh, uh, that uh, immediately this um, um, request uh, or command uh, could be sent uh, via any mobile uh, device. And so we're not talking only about banks uh, and clients. Now we have a chain of intermediaries between them. But uh, again, speaking from the point of, of um, a security guard, a security um, officer. Well, we've got uh, to develop not uh, TOTS technologies, but we've got to uh, develop our um, uh, to develop people. In uh, Russia, we have lots of wonderful experts in uh, I, uh, information technologies. Certainly, well, uh, they are very um, uh, wanted people, and so there are lots of headhunters uh, that are looking for such um, people desiring to acquire them. But nevertheless, that's something that we see in the market as a trend. And um, previously, uh, I um, was an expert uh, in risk management, and uh, I um, saw that uh, many security officers just lacked understanding uh, um, regarding uh, risk management uh, in a very broad sense of the of this word, uh, and uh, in particular when we talk about cybersecurity. So what's a risk? Uh, a risk uh, is a sister of a uh, of an um, um, uh, rate of return uh, or two sides of the medal because if you want to earn and get more money then you've got to uh, be uh, riskier than the others and so those people who are involved in operational activities and they are should be concerned with the uh, cyber risks and so uh, well there are processes people and technologies uh, and, and and let's say security the level of security was very low and has been low for a very long time. And right now, uh, well, uh, the, uh, we've got to raise uh, the layer of um, responsibility to the mid-level of um, managers. Everybody should understand what risks are um, vested uh, in um, today's technologies. And actually, going back uh, to uh, Brad King's speech uh, in the morning, uh, he um, mentioned uh, uh, that uh, a month ago there appeared information that 145 million uh, accounts of uh, FIFAX uh, clients uh, or clients of the company FIFAX uh, uh, were um, obtained by criminals. And so 145 million uh, clients. You see, that's the entire population of Russia. And so what happened uh, later? So the uh, shares, uh, the stock value of this company dropped by 30 percent uh, within one day because it's a critical figure. And it's uh, not by chance that later on uh, the press and the mass media uh, published information that uh, um, uh, various top-ranking officials and uh, uh, demanded an investigation um, regarding um, this um, uh, fact, this crisis, uh, and maybe the, po uh, the possibility of uh, insider uh, trading, because uh, uh, between the date of this uh, uh, incident and the date uh, of uh, the announcement, public announcement in the press, so we saw that uh, certain people from the mid-management uh, strata um, had sold their uh, shares of this company. So it means that they uh, really had inside information. And so we've got to be aware of such uh, the risks, uh, uh, risks related to technological security, uh, the uh, technology securities. And uh, so everybody should be aware of such uh, risks. And it applies not only to the top managers of corporations, but uh, mid-level managers and uh, um, other rank-and-file employees. And so uh, that's something that we've gone to promote. Businesses should understand that. Uh, and the risk management is a number one issue. So it's some to work. Clearly, and thank you very much for your comments. Uh, I want to take you back to the statement made by Andre about the changing profile of the fraudster. I have a question on that topic. Uh, it goes to Dmitry Lokov. Um, 
He's someone who's been involved in this criminal element for some time. Is it true or not? Well, the profile has profile has been changing, but I'm not uh, here to say that uh, young hackers are of uh, much concern. Uh, <coughs> hackers uh, who have uh, had accumulated experience, they may be of danger, but they are not the key risk. Uh, the situation is very fluent uh, geopolitically, and it's uh, more important to make sure that you secure your clients so that their accounts are safe. Uh, but what you need to focus on is to ensure stability of the financial system as a whole. It is clear now that uh, now former school uh, children can successfully attack the most critical infrastructure, which means more professional people could uh, have even a bigger sway. And uh, they um, could stop banks, uh, halt their operations. We're moving to the digital era. Banks are relying on their IT. And uh, if ITs are no longer accessible, even with redundancy, if uh, your IT has been um, hijacked and it is no longer accessible by you as a bank, uh, the uh, process of getting back could take time. So it would uh, cost the bank uh, the value of its assets, or sometimes the banks would simply perish. And many attackers are aware of that. They're looking for effective ways uh, to impact financial stability. <laughs> Scenarios are clear, more or less, the way uh, um, things can be done to um, the results in a, an institution uh, crashing or the whole financial system uh, perishing. The banks are not prepared. Um, and uh, even uh, uh, discussing it uh, is uh, not at the forefront. They're talking more about protecting their clients. However, risks have been changing uh, very fast, and we see that so although the profile of the fraudster has changed, it's not so much about hackers as physical people themselves as uh, to the way uh, these attacks could be spearheaded against the financial stability. So the apocalypse uh, is uh, that everything has changed, hackers are different, uh, they've got lots of uh, knowledge, and now the focus is on the bank. However, my um, impression is this is not exactly so. Today, banks um, could uh, more or less assess their risks and security, could provide security. Uh, but when these sexy technologies are moving uh, on the side of uh, the customer, I th um, have this concern that customers are not protected properly as a regulator. For me, this is the key issue. You could um, uh, order banks to uh, to the line uh, you, as regulator, but uh, what could we offer to the clientele? This is what I want you to discuss, and I want to ask Ilya Kachetkov to respond. He's someone who has been involved in regulation of a very exciting segment. Thank you, Artyom. I was promised a clicker because I wanted to show you some pictures.
to entertain you, and uh, I will be talking abstractly, but I just wanted to show you some specific practices of the Bank of Russia and one of its departments and the way we're trying to resolve that. That Tim in uh, his uh, in the introduction mentioned there are banks and clients. Apart from the banks, uh, there are other players on the financial markets uh, that lend money, uh, credits, uh, uh, various credit institutions. We're talking, I would want to talk about microfinancing institutions. In contrast to the banks, and I don't want to give you the exact number because it keeps changing uh, uh, downwards. We have 2,400 microfinancing institutions uh, who offer loans. If you go to Yandex uh, uh, in the browser and uh, ask a loan, you'll get 100 million offers or results. Uh, I mean, you probably, you would be naive to think that uh, this 100 million is being offered by 2,400 institutions. Uh, it appears there are a lot, many, many lots of other institutions who may that may have uh, some kind of a presence. They call themselves microfinancing institutions. That, that not all of them are legit. So. Uh, we thought uh, that um, to help uh, our men on the street, we want to show which one are uh, better. We showed it with the green balloon. When we were thinking about that and we had different ideas, we soon realized that all others who are not legit uh, microfinancing institutions will catch up very soon. They will do the same very quickly. Uh, uh, Artyom asked me to be very brief. Uh, but you, did you did you notice that the number four and six buildings here are, uh, look the same? Because some of these players they pretend to be proper uh, institutions. So, what do you get uh, when you go to a browser? You could uh, find uh, legit uh, mid microfinancing institutions who comply with the huge amount of rules. Uh, that the central bank institute is the institute is the, uh, the regulator, and they are very strict, sometimes stricter than uh, the ones we have for the banks. Or else, you could get a um, someone who is not uh, a properly regulated microfinancing <coughs> institutions, and if so, then they may be in violation of the rules, and you may um, get uh, uh, involved. Um, uh, in a fraud, or you could uh, face collectors who would uh, have uh, to rely on uh, um, illegitimate means uh, to collect some money from you. So what should we do? We should uh, look for some proper signature or sign of uh, legitimacy. So when uh, you uh, Get this browser query, you will see what you see. And you need to get a mentioning of the Bank of Russia register, and there is a link, and you could go and check. Easy. Uh, and we now offer that uh, for desktops, and this is what actually Yandex is doing. Then we moved over to mobile devices, and Yandex is promising that it uh, will be up and um, uh, running on tablets. Um, is it needed? So since uh, June uh, this year, there were over 7 million clicks, 7 million hits. So what is the purpose of all that? There are three key topics here. We want to see transparent online environment. We want the user to find a transparent institution. And the next topic is awareness. Very few know that microfinancing institutions are being regulated by the Bank of Russia. And we also hope that we are helping uh, the relevant sector uh, grow 
grow and develop and the, the legitimate players have an interest in uh, working properly and uh, legitimately on that market. Thank you very much. When we were preparing for that uh, session, uh, we decided uh, we wanted to demonstrate that um, technology. And I wonder what you think about it. It's, uh, it's also a, a kind of a fintech. Um, it has been offered by the regulator, but it has been uh, implemented uh, by a, um, a high-tech uh, company. And uh, what uh, does it show? We all uh, savvy in economics, in the basics of economics. Uh, we have heard about cooperation and its potential. And we have been told uh, that your business is uh, not isolated. By analogy, we know that uh, auto making is not isolated, it's not a standalone business. Uh, there's a whole cloud of uh, supplies, uh, gas stations, car dealers. It's a kind of an ecosystem which uh, involves uh, suppliers, producers, and uh, consumers with all uh, relevant uh, services. And when we talk about financial technologies, particularly SMEs in that sector, I want to use the same analogy. Security is as um, important part of the ecosystem, financial ecosystem, uh, or as they uh, say now, digitalized uh, financial system as, say, um, communications providers. And I uh, want to hear comments uh, from um, um, Alexei Leonov to start with. He's coming from <coughs> company who is in a position, for, uh, what is in a position to talk about information technologies uh, as well as security. Thank you. As long as we're talking about ecosystems and uh, fintech um, businesses, uh, some of you mentioned. Uh, banks uh, and IT systems and security, but nobody mentioned uh, awareness and protection or uh, protect, well, b b the um, awareness of, of the users. We're talking now more about uh, uh, service users as uh, opposed to bank users uh, and they are individuals, uh, they are nationals of uh, different countries and it is important uh, for us uh, to offer uh, protection to IT systems but also it is important to make sure that some um, clients and users are aware. and. Um, it may be important for the Yandex to offer this service, uh, uh, but uh, if your user is using Google for a browser, um, they may not be as uh, savvy as uh, aware. Um, and there are many systems, so this kind of ticks uh, uh, be uh, in green or other color, they may be important for other browsers. Um, or take, for example, the underground, uh, and you may get down inside and you hear the uh, announcements of a tenoy how to use it properly. You never asked why, you know uh, why and how what to do and, uh, in terms of information security in terms of awareness. Uh, there is no such uh, tenor system in the internet. So you get a new service, there's a new user of that service, and he, she's um, uh, largely unaware of how to use it properly so that you're not defrauded, so, so that you can get uh, proper service, and uh, to be sure that uh, you've got a legit uh, fintech company or legit uh, bank. So the ecosystem is all about um, uh, security and it is supposed to be holistic. Well, I see. 
And so let me ask you a provocative question. When we talk about um, lending, then we have rules that when, uh, when a client comes to you uh, to apply for a um, loan, uh, you've got to uh, explain to this customer the full cost of this credit, of this loan. And so let me address this issue, this question, to the Ross Telecom re representative. And so do you think it would be worthwhile uh, um, introducing the same rule uh, regarding technologies that you've gone to, to explain to customers uh, all the risks? Well, I believe that it would be very difficult to uh, explain all the risks and difficulties and, 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 and challenges regarding uh, our uh, information uh, um, technologies, but uh, we've got to speak about the digital hygiene uh, that uh, even um, school children uh, from a very early age uh, should understand the ba basics of cyber uh, security. Um, that well, the same applies to. Uh, um, brushing your teeth on a daily basis, that it's necessary to do that in the morning in the, and uh, at night. And so the same applies to using um, special uh, hygiene um, uh, hygiene devices and, and, and some um, habits in order to uh, keep up the uh, digital safety uh, of uh, the devices and those uh, platforms that we have issued regarding uh, the uh, computer literacy um, in the sphere of um, uh, digital um, environment and uh, uh, machine learning. And we know, we see that people are vulnerable and about 60 to 70 percent of users are unprotected because they don't know uh, what they should do. Uh, in order to increase um, their safety and their degree of protection. Well, let me uh, comment on the cyber culture. And uh, recently, well, um, we had this um, incident. I don't know whether the Russian information uh, environment has noticed it, but I think it was, uh, um, it happened in October last year. Now, there was a mass leak uh, of uh, email addresses uh, in the United States of the uh, state employees uh, um, in the United States. Approximately uh, half a billion, half a million uh, email addresses uh, of uh, uh, government uh, officials um, were stolen by uh, the uh, criminals, uh, by criminals. And so uh, actually 40% uh, uh, of such um, uh, victims uh, represented the Pentagon. And so uh, where did the uh, fraudsters obtain um, this information? Uh, on the uh, various uh, um, websites uh, with very dubious content. So it's like uh, the uh, um, um, pornography um, and some um, other similar uh, sites. And so well, some people even uh, uh, write their well, pin codes on the back side of their bank cards, well, which is um, uh, something that um, should not be done um, at any cost. But the same applies uh, to uh, uh, the uh, people that they've got to be uh, vigilant. So now we know how to defeat the US Army uh, uh, because, well, things are turned out to be far simpler. And so, colleagues, um, well, um, let's go on discussing this topic. And let me uh, address my question to Igor Lepinov. Uh, but before that, I would like to uh, insert one comment. And so I've been working in the security area uh, for a long time. And just I remember that five, 10 years ago, people kept uh, repeating the same phrase. Yes, yes, we've got to raise the awareness regarding security, that we've got to, uh, to focus on risk management in the sphere of cybersecurity and security. And so uh, we see that the number of problems uh, is not going down, despite the fact that we see more and more people involved in um, uh, 
uh, various um, uh, learning educational programs. And so the thing is that the users uh, uh, should be able to use openly um, without any fear uh, various technologies and well, security of such devices should be uh, uh, provided by the other side, well, by the provider of the service, but not by the user. If we talk about the financial sector, for instance, there, at, at, well, there, use, uh, there was a time when uh, uh, bank clients uh, were defrauded of their money, uh, um, and the money was stolen from their bank accounts. Uh, but now we see that uh, new technologies uh, uh, would uh, reduce the possibility of um, um, such fraudulent transactions, uh, because, well, well certainly, uh, if uh, uh, we start explaining uh, uh, to the bank users uh, that well well you see new technologies would help you would help you uh, save your money and unless you do that or you do this uh, well uh, you can uh, you can be defrauded well uh, what I mean to say that we shouldn't uh, put fears into the heads of the clients uh, well well yes well it's a matter of hygiene so you clean your teeth uh, but it doesn't mean that uh, uh, um, uh, um, um, you it should be similar uh, to uh, the habit uh, uh, of not leaving your pin codes wherever. Or so, okay, even I give my bank cards together with the pin code uh, to uh, some fraudster, but I, even if I don't do that physically, how can I be 100% sure that uh, somebody would, you know, wouldn't hack my... Uh, um, account and wouldn't steal my money. So all banks have their own difficulties and they have, well, I cannot remember all the passwords and sometimes I have to use the same pass, uh, password uh, um, for different companies. Well, there are certain um, um, there are certain tips, for instance, uh, when you uh, receive uh, an a letter uh, on your email from an unknown person uh, with an attachment, so never open up this attachment. Uh, and that's why you could uh, try and uh, avoid uh, the um, uh, malware that can be incorporated into such a message. Well, yes, I understand that. Well, of course, uh, well, there are some, uh, there's some common sense, but we shouldn't uh, click on all unknown uh, correspondence that we receive, in particular from strangers. But nevertheless, we cannot expect users uh, to uh, know everything. You certainly cannot uh, teach people everything. With your, uh, with your permission, uh, dear colleagues, I would interrupt your uh, discussion and let me try and reformat it, reshape it. Dear colleagues, uh, uh, will you please raise your hands, those who use um, mobile applications? Yes, excellent. And now the question, and who personally understands uh, that when you use a mobile uh, application, uh, so you have all the accounts attached to this mobile application, who of you understands uh, the risks? Uh, the risk uh, of, um, let's say, uh, compromising your accounts once you have registered only once in one application. And so you see the number of people who understand that and those who use the mobile uh, devices for various services. That's the difference. And it just proves uh, the point uh, which I wanted to, dis uh, to discuss with you, with you previously. And it's cyber hygiene, uh, which is very important. And certainly, well, the responsibility can be shifted onto the bank uh, uh, of, the of the customer, onto some other financial institution, but it will not resolve the problem. Technically, such things cannot be always resolved. Uh, and um, that's something that uh, it makes uh, highly risky this transition to total digitalization and creates additional risks. And now uh, let me touch upon another aspect of this issue. Again, going back to uh, this morning's uh, discussion, let me remind you of what uh, we uh, were discussing then. We spoke about remote uh, digital identification. And actually, we were talking about the digital passports of a person uh, and the life of this digital passport in, in the virtual uh, sphere. We remember that 
the bank is on the one hand, the consumer is on the other hand, and uh, between them there are some technologies, and this digital passport, the data from the dig digital passport passes uh, through uh, this link between the two uh, uh, entities. And so at a certain point, uh, well, this uh, information can be compromised or stolen. And so what should we do about that? So let me uh, address this question to Mr. Liponov. Thank you. And so the theft of a digital identity uh, is a very tough story. And, um, and we have mentioned um, several times about the defrauded uh, uh, customers of banks, uh, stolen money from accounts, and now we speak about the uh, uh, robbery of identity, digital identity and data. Uh, and so uh, if we uh, stand on the earth and speak about traditional systems uh, which uh, ensure access to our accounts, uh, to our bank accounts and mobile applications uh, and, uh, uh, and the like, uh, they're still linked uh, to some uh, tangible and understandable um, measures. But when uh, you try to authenticate your identity uh, via certain uh, intermediaries in the form of applications and you present your personal data and so this uh, data uh, may be put uh, may be threatened uh, by uh, certain um, fraudsters and uh, I see it as a twofold uh, problem first so we've got to think about the protection of such identity data I don't want to use I don't like to use uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, digital identity because, well, this is this sounds very futuristic, but nevertheless we are in uh, Phenopolis. But still, uh, let's talk about uh, um, personal data. So it's one thing when your login, uh, password, and uh, some other data is uh, um, are stolen. Uh, well, basically they are keys, the same, um, they are like keys to an apartment, and so you know how to get protected. Uh, so you change the key, you change the locker, etc. But, uh, well, naturally, yes, well, cyber hygiene, uh, that's something that sounds, in my opinion, as follows. Uh, do I have to, to, to tell uh, my child that uh, he shouldn't go to uh, a, a black ghetto, and if you still uh, uh, will go there, you've got to leave uh, your wallet and money money and all um, other um, expensive things uh, uh, at home. Uh, and so the same applies to children. Well, some children uh, visit different sites. Uh, some uh, uh, download uh, some down download pictures, books, and music from uh, torrent websites, and uh, at the same time, they're using the same computer, the same IP address uh, to access bank accounts. And so, well, that's something that I've got uh, uh, to tell my children. Okay, well, you've got to be aware that in the world there are certain areas where you've got to be a very uh, vigilant because if you uh, take the risk of going there, then be ready uh, to uh, um, um, be beaten, maybe sometimes and. Uh, to have some problems. And so that's something that uh, applies to the digital sphere as well. Uh, digitalization means that when you give your key to a fintech uh, or um, a tech fin uh, or something that uh, becomes the entity that acts on your behalf uh, in your dealings with the bank. And so that's one point. Uh, the second aspect, that's the regulatory field that would place uh, the responsibility for the safety of money, for the safety of the e-wallet um, uh, on the uh, intermediary, this uh, fintech, uh, well, uh, wearing, um, um, uh, let's say, dreads and, and, and uh, red sneakers. That was uh, the developer of that um, application. I actually have more questions now, particularly about the um, uh, passing on of uh, the liability. My question is actually to Alexei Leonov. Uh, when you know how the um, cloud ABS works uh, and how the uh, uh, responsibility is being uh, distributed, uh, allocated between the bank and the, uh, um, the fintech companies, uh, what can we talk about security in that sense? Um, 
Um, it's relevant because in terms of the outsourcing, uh, and I could refer you to what we have been doing, uh, or and there's no distinct um, line. Uh, this is your responsibility. This is mine. Uh, the security is part and parcel of outsourcing. Out no outsourcing can happen unless some of the uh, security is being uh, allocated um, um, uh, and um, responsibility or liability is distributed, in fact. Uh, they, they, we've agree, we agree, we've um, arranged um, uh, how it is all uh, allocated. I agree with Igor uh, that there's uh, here a, a regulatory issue because when um, you have uh, outsourcing in the banking systems, uh, uh, you need to comply with uh, certain uh, legal and regulatory requirements uh, and you become uh, aware of, uh, of that uh, and all parties involved uh, need to be uh, aware uh, and um, as the, uh, an outsourcing uh, fintech company, you have an overall responsibility, but you are also responsible for ensuring proper controls. Um, so there are multifaceted problems there. And there is this very uh, uh, clear issue of insurance, risk insurance, uh, third party insurance, outsourcing insurance. And this is something that the Bank of Russia is supposed uh, to be looking into as a regulator. It's true the central bank is responsible for regulating insurance companies, but uh, it is not uh, there to say uh, anything about the insurance products. Uh, insuring risk is one of a specific uh, business model of one specific insurance company. Are you, uh, do you have a full picture of how all of risks could be covered? Uh, it's all very bad with insurance in terms of IT risk insurance and IT security insurance. Uh, things available on the markets uh, um, uh, about uh, insuring you uh, against uh, your talking being lost or stolen from you. And that's more or less it. Um, uh, we have uh, DDoS attacks insurance uh, because we're clear more or less about uh, the metrics, about the damages. We could uh, do the assessments of uh, the possible damages. So we're working on that and we will be approaching the Bank of Russia uh, asking for certain regulations at the level of the federal law. Well, you mentioned the um, alliance, um, and uh, I know that in Europe and in the United States, um, companies are offering uh, insurance, and they work together with companies uh, that uh, will be doing the risk um, uh, tracking, the risk monitoring. So they work hand in hand, and this is the technology that is quite popular in uh, the States and uh, in Europe, and I'm sure Russia will be catching up soon. Now, what's so difficult to get it on the markets in Russia here at this point in time? Confidentially, uh, I have... Uh, uh, talk to one of the banks who, uh, in uh, Russia who is offering uh, that kind of products uh, uh, in uh, Russia and it seems the market is unaware of the benefits. My question is to Dmitry Volkov. Uh, you work both here and in the West and uh, you work um, on investigating various incidents. I wonder if you have an experience to insurance companies? Have you worked with them in any way, in any shape or fashion? 
we we have a co-product, co-insurance product with LG. If we we offer uh, monitoring of uh, solutions, and we offer solutions, and there is insurance product uh, which says that in case of the event, the insurance company will pay uh, out some some uh, insurance. Uh, uh, our guarantee or warrant is that this incident doesn't happen, uh, uh, this event doesn't occur. Um, but there is the other side of the coin here in uh, the United States, for example, uh, when they faced this uh, large scale um, incidents with uh, ransomware, uh, uh, they um, started uh, offering insurance against that particular type of uh, risk. Um, the insurance company will be paying out and should you catch up this uh, ransomware. But actually, this is an incentive incentive for the hackers because uh, they know if you attack some company, you um, uh, have this uh, ransomware planet, uh, you know that the company is insured and they'll get their money back. Uh, um, there's a motivation. Now, you were talking about some uh, regulation that may be, company, uh, may be coming from the regulators uh, wherever, when uh, the regulators will be fining companies uh, for, say, uh, 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 leakages of personal data, but this is an incentive for the hackers. Instead of selling that in the black market, they could offer, they could ask for the ransom from the company which is insured, and then the damage will be even higher, and it's very difficult to assess it. The hackers know exactly what they could ask for in their ransom. Uh, they know how much, uh, what, what sort of damage uh, this company will suffer. This is the other side of the coin, and we need to be aware of it. My question is to Dmitry Kanaval for the same question. What do you think about insurance? I've been listening to my uh, colleagues here, and I was thinking about uh, so much in common we have uh, in insuring risks and insuring uh, industries or uh, corporations uh, to make an assessment of uh, any insurance. The standard um, is based on the statistics on the actuary assessment, but it's the same with uh, cyber risks, the same as in manufacturing, but uh, there may not be enough statistics. Uh, uh, cyber risks are evolving, they may be changing, uh, they could be decentralized, they could be centralized, they could be targeted or not. Uh, so even if you have some statistics, uh, uh, you don't, you may not have enough. Uh, uh, you, we all are saying that we want to prevent uh, risks from happening. So how could you assess them from the point of view insurance? So I'm wondering whether you can actually ask for the insurers to take up uh, that. Uh, um, it may offer a certain uh, mitigation to the financial burden of this early corporation, but there is still reputation or regulation risk. Uh, and um, as for uh, Russia, uh, um, uh, insurance here is uh, lagging behind. Uh, there is some mandatory product like uh, car insurance or third-party insurance. Uh, but can you tell me how many of you have got life insur assurance? Not many, just a few of you. Uh, this is the attitude to insurance as we have. Uh, there is lack of culture. Uh, or I'm not saying we are lagging behind. It's just difficult. It's a different culture, different from the United States, for example. You think it's all down to the mentality of Russians? Um, again, my question to Mr. Leponov. Uh, what do you think about insurance? Insurance is cool, I agree, uh, but 
that um, we know the problems insurance companies are facing. Insurance is about statistics. They've got certain issue with actuary assessments. And then every bank, every company uh, trying uh, to hide uh, the stories about uh, hacking incidents. So you can't get some reliable statistics. I, I'm just, uh, I need to explain our business. We have the center of monitoring covering over 40 customers. We're monitoring the Russian uh, soccer or uh, football uh, championship, Bank uh, Tinkov Bank. We uh, helped with the Meerkat release. We cover some uh, largest regional uh, banks. Um, we are aware of their internal uh, incidents and how much um, it public and how much the insurance companies can learn uh, about them. This is a drop in a, in a notion. Uh, it is not uh, appropriate, it is not customary to release and make public data about cyber attacks. So there is no reliable information which may feed into an insurance model. And this is a key problem. We all are aware of that. Um, we may be talking about seek, uh, allocating responsibility, uh, be it uh, internal IT security or outsources. All our discussion is pure speculations and deliberations. There is no appropriate insurance product which could work in Russia. So the idea is, if I understand it, if we want insurance to grow, people will not be focusing on security and we don't have proper insurance policies because there is no statistics, because the statistics is not being made public. Um, as a, an owner of a business, uh, I would be only glad to come uh, clean. Uh, I am very pragmatic uh, in uh, facing risks, uh, IT risks or business risks. I want to see them mitigated. I want to uh, get compensation and to make sure this is this. Uh, cheap as possible. Sometimes uh, it'll be enough to implement some technical solutions, some redundancy or backups. Uh, in two thirds of cases, legal risks could be uh, uh, mitigated. Uh, but I would have loved uh, to rely on insurance. And there is demand on the market. It's just the supplies are lacking for objective reasons. Uh, what do you all think uh, um, about the reasons whereby the majority of incidents are, are not uh, being made public, are actually hushed up? Mm, this question goes to Leonov, please. I would argue again personally, um, that um, they hush it up uh, because they are afraid of uh, getting a um, uh, some reciprocal action. Uh, for example, when we're talking about license revocation uh, and uh, uh, when, when you're talking in the context of uh, license and regulation, uh, you always um, be concerned. You, you will always be concerned that there may be some repercussions from the regulator if you disclose this or other incident. Sometimes it is difficult to prosecute and find and prosecute someone uh, who succeeded in attacking. It's very difficult to locate them and punish them. We have some statistics on that. Uh, actually, a, a criminal statistic is uh, quite a dismal. There's very low percentage of people who, who actually were located, identified, and there's even less of prosecution, successful prosecution in that area. So I think uh, that this is a set of uh, issues which uh, the banking market is afraid of. Uh, 
trying and resolved. So the question, the next question is what's happening in the West? Are they also afraid? Well, it seems that I'm acting as an expert uh, from abroad, as a Western expert, although I, I work in Russia and the CIA states. But well, the fact is that in the West, the situation is just uh, virtually the same. Uh, and sometimes uh, people are more afraid than we are because uh, virtually uh, all uh, major banks are um, traded in the market at the exchange. And the very fact uh, that they've lost something as a result of the uh, cyber attack. Uh, and even if somebody uh, publishes information that their um, uh, IT system is vulnerable, it means that they can lose uh, uh, huge amounts um, at the exchange, uh, even if uh, they start uh, um, uh, promising everybody that they will um, definitely capture uh, the fraudsters and uh, get have them punished, etc. But anyway, well, there is a, a, a company uh, which is called Target. Uh, well, two or three years ago, it was attacked uh, uh, via uh, the um, suppliers, and they were attacked quite uh, toughly. And they, um, uh, the fraudsters um, stole uh, um, dozens of million of um, personal accounts, um, and the company even tried to conceal this fact because they were afraid of the losses. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the state authorities uh, have um, forced the company and the managers of the company to disclose the situation uh, and uh, uh, so that uh, it would be um, a case to be studied uh, by the other companies. But uh, Target lost uh, a lot uh, due to the uh, uh, drop in the cost of their securities and equity in, in the at exchange. And so uh, um, what about, uh, let's say, the mandatory rule uh, to disclose such information? Well, uh, uh, well, the regulators have just uh, obliged uh, uh, obliged um, uh, uh, all the companies to disclose an, uh, information about such uh, cyber attacks and facts. Uh, well, uh, um, as far as the new regulation goes, uh, well, uh, that's, uh, yes, uh, certainly. Uh, well, I believe that the information um, um, Sending this uh, such um, facts and reports uh, to the regulator is one thing, but making publicly available information about such um, uh, successful uh, hackers' attacks is another thing. Uh, and uh, I just don't want uh, to uh, uh, well, um, try and present the banker's view, but uh, I will uh, talk about our position, our stand. Our infrastructure is very open, and the infrastructure that we are using uh, to monitor our, our clients is quite sensitive, and we experience uh, quite a large number of attacks against us. Uh, not uh, all of the attacks uh, uh, are successful. Well, uh, they're trying to penetrate the perimeter. They try to use social engineering um, uh, techniques. And so we uh, certainly uh, try and identify such attacks and um, uh, get them caught. Uh, at different levels, um, uh, at an earlier stage, at a later stage. But nevertheless, uh, well, uh, the ability to detect is very important for me as far as the security goes. Uh, uh, so if you have detected uh, this uh, uh, um, attempt, uh, criminal attempt, uh, or this attack uh, is one thing. You can block it and so make sure that the same tool is not used twice. Uh, but uh, I believe that uh, uh, to demonstrate such uh, incidents uh, which have already occurred uh, is not harmful, uh, uh, in my opinion. I don't know how the regulator would uh, respond or react and so well some inspector may say well demonstrate to us how exactly you are uh, diffuse um, uh, this attack um, and to diffuse the situation and uh, sometimes uh, some incidents may be very uh, sensitive and it's up to the banks to disclose or not to uh, disclose such uh, information well uh, speaking about the statistics uh, uh, I'm don't understand uh, very well uh, the point uh, that uh, it's up to the regulator to do something or uh, another. And now, um, actually, at the uh, FinCET um, uh, 
websites, uh, we uh, have stated that uh, uh, out of uh, uh, half a million uh, participants uh, of this information exchange, almost 45% uh, of such um, uh, subjects, agents, uh, are uh, very actively sending information about um, attacks, cyber attacks against them. Uh, so if you look uh, at the list of active uh, market players, then uh, you would see that these are uh, uh, small size and medium sized banks. So they are quite stable uh, regional banks and quite stable Moscow uh, entities, which uh, uh, share um, quite uh, um, will willingly um, with the um, peers regarding such facts and in this information. So, um, because it pertains uh, to the general level of protection and security. So, uh, such banks understand how they uh, should shape uh, their security systems. Uh, and uh, that's uh, one conclusion that I can make. And the second conclusion is that uh, these banks rather expect uh, uh, not a supervisory response uh, from the regulator, but uh, um, certain help and assistance uh, in repelling such cyber attacks. Uh, and certainly, to some extent, we do provide some assistance uh, because the average uh, response time uh, regarding incidents uh, is uh, from uh, 30 to 90 days. And um, basically, it's uh, fairly good. Um, indicates, uh, but uh, I cannot say that we are just as efficient everywhere. Well, uh, uh, DDoS attacks have already been mentioned here, and this is uh, quite a serious problem for lending institutions. And uh, it's not uh, difficult to detect them uh, so much as uh, it's difficult to uh, communicate with the uh, communications uh, suppliers, mobile operators. Well, um, yes, we work uh, in close contact with you, and every uh, two uh, minutes uh, we uh, send notices uh, to the central bank and to banks as well. Well, we don't have any problems with you. That's true. But uh, uh, to what extent the uh, mobile operators, telecom operators, are ready to cooperate uh, with one another and whether it's uh, it makes sense? Well, yes, it does make sense uh, because uh, uh, we've been discussing uh, for a long time now the uh, idea of setting up uh, such a server or such a service uh, that would unite uh, the uh, efforts of all mobile operators in the sphere. Uh, and, and since right now we're talking about the uh, digital economy um, uh, program and, uh, well, the central bank uh, um, has presented its vision uh, of uh, uh, this um, digital economy and uh, um, it's based on an ongoing dialogue between the regulator and the banks, uh, although it's a matter for the future. Um, uh, let me um, say a couple of words about MinCert uh, and with the emergence of FinCert, uh, um, we see that the regulator has created the center for collecting such data, such information. And uh, um, this um, instrument, um, financial center, um, helps overcome um, some fears, um, reticence, um, and also provides information about what's going on in different areas and uh, how peer banks respond uh, to uh, the difficulties and risks, and uh, we see that the number of um, information, the amount of information regarding various uh, risky incidents uh, is going up and the fear is diminishing. Well, thank you very much. I can only hope that it's really true. That, But uh, we're not uh, concerned only about uh, sending uh, information bulletins, so to speak, about the information security is uh, still um, a topical issue. And now uh, let us uh, talk about uh, changes uh, to the uh, issue of security, cybersecurity, in the face of the uh, forthcoming uh, 
change of economic paradigm. Let's start with the IBM. Um, yes, uh, certainly, uh, um, without doubt, the attitude is changing very dr drastically, and there are three stages, the past, the present, and the future. What paradigm uh, did we see um, previously? And uh, that's the perimeter protection. This is the basic thing uh, which underlies any security system. And now, today, when we protect the perimeter, we can say uh, uh, certainly that the company is 100% uh, protected, but this company becomes too isolated, uh, overprotected. In some sectors, um, such companies can operate, but uh, while speaking about the banking sector, I cannot imagine a successful bank uh, that would be using this paradigm. Uh, and so, uh, it means that uh, we cannot rely, banks cannot rely on such, on the perimeter protection exclusively, and that's why their attitude should change, and the uh, instruments uh, should uh, change uh, too. And, uh, for instance, uh, uh, some um, old-time um, security officers uh, are against open security systems uh, because, well, the idea of openness is um, absolutely um, improbable to them in this context. And um, nevertheless, that's something that uh, has to be done. And actually, uh, Igor uh, spoke about those things as well. And uh, IBM is also using um, outsourced uh, companies. And we have acquired quite interesting statistics. Uh, and we have published it um, as uh, part of the global report. Uh, and so uh, we see that. Uh, uh, usually, uh, well, uh, for 50 million uh, security incidents uh, happen uh, annually in um, various um, sectors. And certainly, without the support uh, of uh, um, an artificial intelligence, uh, uh, man could not succeed uh, in resolving security issues and uh, well I uh, envisage situations when the AI would assist uh, people but not uh, make decisions instead of the man. Yes, I also agree that the paradigm is changing very quickly and uh, we are specializing in anti-fraud uh, technologies and again going back to the AI uh, well, if you ask uh, uh, the security um, managers uh, in your bank, for instance, uh, uh, what, how do they understand machine learning? And so uh, machine learning uh, in, uh, is linked to, to the uh, neural net. Uh, and what's a neural net? Um, it's uh, sort of uh, the prediction of probability of events. And so there are different probabilities. And so the probability that this event would never happen and the probability that it would happen 100%. And so there are always two sides to it. And uh, uh, I fully under, um, support the previous speaker uh, who said that the uh, AI would help you uh, get rid of the uh, routine uh, work and routine actions, but certainly uh, the, no AI would be able to make decisions instead of you because, well, uh, the acceptance of risks, that's the uh, function of the owner of the company, owners of the company, and the CEO, etc., cetera, uh, top managers. But nevertheless, the paradigm is changing, and the uh, uh, um, professional staff are ready to discuss the neuro um, networks and the openness and some other approaches uh, to uh, security issues. Okay, let's move on. Let me take you down to the ground. I agree the paradigm is changing. The business seems to be ahead of the security, but then it uh, decelerates. And uh, I think security experts uh, uh, need uh, to be more on focus. Uh, business moves into the cloud technologies, and the security should move there as well. And um, uh, you may not like it, Artyom, but this is the uh, need of the day. There could be different <coughs> clouds, and we've been using corporate clouds. We live in those corporate clouds. We have been there. 
and I'm sure that security solutions uh, could move uh, from hardware to software in the Gartman of Forest. Uh, back in uh, the West, they've been doing that for five years. We are lagging behind the Western uh, economies uh, by five years or, or more. We need to catch up. We need to catch up uh, with the business. It's not so easy. There are different aspects to security. One thing is ensuring stability. The other is ensuring safety against some outside attacks. Uh, and there is this information <coughs> security um, uh, as a whole. Uh, and there is this concern everywhere, not just in Russia. It hasn't been um, mitigated. Uh, as business grows, the number of uh, corporates uh, grow. They may not uh, be enough uh, of uh, human resources for all. So some of the security functions <coughs> could move out. So, uh, of uh, the corporation and be based on some uh, outsourced uh, uh, services. Uh, we are not clear what it uh, will uh, look like, but I'm sure the winner comes uh, among those uh, who will have uh, the best uh, of uh, the knowledge and uh, the, they will have uh, all uh, the possible data, if you know everything about uh, John or Jack, what sort of devices they have, where they live, what uh, hobbies they have, what um, uh, information literacy uh, he or she may have, um, and if the outside players got the, the total knowledge, uh, about individuals or companies to be protected. Uh, such players will come uh, a, a winner. It uh, may not happen um, before 10 years down the way, down the road, or even faster. Um, as for the machine learning or artificial intelligence, they could help. They will uh, change some security processes. But you should remember, it's not just security people who will be using them, but those against whom uh, you're working. So uh, again, uh, it's maybe debatable who will come the winner. At this point in time, hackers are more efficient. Sometimes, uh, depending on the kind of attack, they may still be quite efficient in uh, relying on new technologies uh, in the future. But again, it's something that we will have to live and see. I understand that microfinancing institutions are slightly um, uh, unrelated. So I uh, want to take you back to this uh, uh, security hygiene, uh, and I want to refer to my colleague with his uh, very good case study. Being a regulator, you sometimes feel like a parent. You need to talk to your children, and sometimes you need to talk to your regulated companies. On the financial markets, uh, we uh, try <coughs> to raise awareness of the public, explaining what instruments you need to buy and what instruments you um, don't know enough. Um, and we issued a report on qualified and unqualified uh, investors. Uh, and actually, the bottom line is that some qualified investors should not be allowed to buy into pay into securities they are not aware of. The same is about security. So if you don't know how to use the instrument, don't touch your smartphone. It's another way to, to treat the um, security. As for trends, um, 
we have the markets uh, where we have, apart from the banks and their clients, we have other players or participants who will not be banks but offer financial services, and this is already a reality. We see emerging so-called digital identity, whatever, whether you like it or not, and the security will be to offer protection to digital identity to monitor all the related incidents uh, and services and of course analysis of the behavior of the individuals who use those services so that you could uh, have uh, a very clear picture of who is using the service a fraudster or a legit user consumer before I respond to that, I want to tell you an anecdote. I met someone two months ago. It was a potential uh, customer, a state corporation, and I had the IT director and the security expert. We discussed uh, monitoring services and outsourcing services that we offer, how we want to interact. Uh, uh, we discussed very intensely various IT and internal process and integration. Uh, the security expert just stayed mum for 30 minutes and then he coughed and said, uh, uh, Agar, we don't need your services. We have everything protected. All our information systems have been implemented in accordance with Decree 70 of STEC. We all uh, read uh, as young people um, state commissions reports uh, where, uh, that said you need to do your research, you need to uh, set up the model, then develop, implement, and then two years down the road you need to uh, conduct the certification. It doesn't work like that these days. Uh, this digitalization is uh, for some uh, a um, synonym uh, to uh, uh, catalyze, uh, to, ca to a catalyst. Um, they believe that with digitalization uh, it's the same but it works faster. Well, I, do, I have nothing against the regulator, but this is a wrong approach, a very wrong approach. Uh, the uh, uh, information security management model has changed radically. There are two uh, challenges facing security uh, offices. One is the dynamics of the outside environment. Uh, various attacks that uh, seem to evolve and change uh, in the dark sides. Uh, this is one challenge. And the second challenge uh, has to do with internal evolution. Uh, this model of evolution should be part and parcel of the business strategy. Larger companies um, may have uh, three or four uh, releases of business systems, uh, and they uh, have uh, dozens of servers they need to deal with. Uh, for them, it is um, an imperative uh, to live with the change. Uh, they need to be capable of seeing all those challenges, uh, adapting to them, live together with this digitalization in the same pace. You might probably have heard about shadow IT. It's where uh, the uh, business um, is starting some uh, new processes that uh, uh, the business process are being implemented. Digitalization, the digital team will be running ahead. 
and that will be the last uh, day of that security officer. He will be sacked, shot down, and it will happen very soon, probably five years down the road. So security officers will have to be rotated. So there'll be two thirds of uh, them rotated because they need to adapt. They need to change their mentality because uh, this digitalization uh, is uh, forever. Thank you. It's not a rather immortal picture that we've got. So we still have a little bit of time, and I wonder if we have any questions to our panelists. Uh, it's something that uh, I've been very concerned. I'm from Bank of Russia. My name is Bajov, but I don't work uh, with the same in the same department with my colleague. You showed uh, how a database uh, was stolen with identity stolen. So what? Uh, what was the threat? Did they try to contact 150 million identities? It's all been blown out of a proportion by reporters. There, there are other more important security threats. There is this law on personal data. This, this is uh, almost like a holy cow. So we have this law on personal data. It's got very tough requirements to things that may not be important. Uh, and you get this very rigid feedback, which actually doesn't work. Uh, it makes our work as regulators harder. But I wonder if we need to revisit this law and make it probably slightly less tough. Thank you. I want you to keep you away from that, particularly when Tinkov said this this bullshit, this personal data uh, business uh, earlier this day. But in, in fact, this is not easy. The law was um, drafted uh, based on uh, European uh, legislation with some purely Russian specific uh, provisions. Um, it is to protect the subject of uh, the personal data, uh, but um, it um, institutes, it establishes a lot of restrictions uh, to those who handle this data. This law is not perfect. It is not perfect, uh, uh, not to me uh, as the officer of the Bank of Russia uh, regulator, but as the uh, human being. It is very cumbersome. And for the future of uh, fintech, it is very difficult to be implemented. So it uh, uh, inevitably will have to be revisited. But uh, when Tinkoff uh, on stage uh, added what he added, he meant uh, probably analysis of data and the use of data by for business purposes. But there is another side of the coin, and we've heard about it. We're talking uh, in that context, it is about the theft uh, of data and damage to or injury to uh, individuals. This is the other side of personal data and leakages of personal data. There are not many case studies in that area, but when you, uh, when you have them, they are very painful. Uh, the law itself, uh, as it is, may be revisited and changed and amended to the extent that we need to have it harmonized with the European legislation. But it's not the question 
to uh, uh, being asked of the Bank of Russia. Is this happening? I don't know when. Thank you very much to all of uh, our panelists. We worked slightly longer than expected, uh, but I'm sure we persuaded you that it's not all doom and gloom and information security is to stay together with uh, information technologies. Thank you.